Hananikinus is a small native marsupial. Um, there's about 15 different species of Antichinus. Those two species that are part of this project are the silver-headed Antichinus and the black-tailed dusky Antichinus. We've only discovered these species in the last four or five years, so they're pretty new to science. The key threats to the Antichinus species would be climate change, introduced feral predators like cats and foxes, horses and cows uh, and pigs trampling habitat areas, fire is a threat to both species. We use a model, we have various variables in the model like altitude and moisture content and um, soil type and that sort of thing. And we can basically use previous captures to inform the model, use the model to predict where the animals should occur uh, and then we can go out into the field and assess whether the animals are actually there or not. And during that time we've had students out finding out about their basic ecology mostly using small metal box traps called Elliot traps uh, where you can live capture animals and then record statistics about them and then release them. And then together with the bait inside we put some coconut fibre to make it a little bit warmer for them during the night and also a place bed, bed outside the trap and then to protect them from weather conditions such as rainfall and, set, and wind as well. But the limitation of that previous work was, um, while it was important foundational work, we were really only using one method of capture, the Elliot traps. So we then started to broaden that to use camera traps as well. The beauty of those is the Elliot traps you can only deploy for a few days. Uh, the camera traps you can leave for weeks to months at a time. The camera traps we're using are um, white flash colour photos and we orient them, basically the camera pointing straight at the ground, about three quarters of a metre above the ground. And that really helps us be quite confident about the identification. So we've got that part down, but then the problem is that the camera traps are only so effective as well. So you really need another technique and that's where the detection dogs come in. We've been working with the detection dog team for um, the last three or four years. To get the uh, dogs into the field requires about a, a year of lead time. We have to catch some of the target species first and also some of the other species that it will occur with. Collect scats or poo, if you like, from each of those different species. Send that to the dog team and then they go through a series of training exercises where they'll train the dog to ignore all the smells of the other species and only focus on the target species that they're trying to find. The dogs go through a lot of work uh, to be safe uh, with, uh, with wildlife. Our, our aim is to work with uh, and to preserve and conserve the wildlife. So we want the dogs to have as minimal impact as possible. When we're working through in the field uh, and the dog comes across one or all of the, uh, the scents that we've provided to them in training, uh, they'll course in and indicate. Now for each of the dogs, the indication is slightly different. Uh, for Ash here, uh, he'll put his nose on the odour source and he'll freeze in a, in a point like indication. Once we get detections in those various areas, we can then reinform the model and uh, makes the model more accurate. And then because this project's running across a couple of years, we then go and redeploy and basically iteratively improve the model. The main results from the project, given that we're about midway, it's really firmed up the utility of the dogs, um, how important they are, especially because, you know, the last two years looking for black-tailed dusky antichinus, for example, they're really hard to catch, either in a trap or on a camera. Um, and yet the dogs are still finding them. And I think actually without the dogs, over the last year or two, it would be really depressing coming back to some of these sites because essentially we haven't seen a live animal here in a trap for over two years. So I think this is really going to help conservation managers um, because we're going to have a set of specific locations where the animals occur within their national parks that they manage, which means the national parks officers will be able to focus uh, on those certain areas and uh, basically that they've got the highest conservation priority in those particular spots.